Welcome to Your Daily Writing Habit, episode number 157. If you are writing a book or thinking about it, or maybe you've started writing your book and you're having some trouble finishing it, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Christine Whitmarsh, and if you're looking for me online, look up Christine Inc., I-N-K, christine-inc.com. Each day I'm sharing with you the writing habits I've learned over my 18 years as a ghostwriter, book coach, and author. I have found that three things in particular have a huge impact on your success, and they have the ability to turn a non-author into an author. Those three things are writing fundamentals, productivity, and mindset habits. And there's a story behind the today's episode a little while ago at this point while you're listening to this. It would be a few weeks ago. Uh, I live in Jacksonville Beach, Florida, and Hurricane Dorian was was threatening. And, you know, so everything was kind of like hurricane themed in my life, including uh, as my husband and I were stocking up on all the snacks. We, we said either we're all set through the hurricane or we're going to have enough food to get us through football season. That was our mindset. And we have certainly enough water now. Uh, so we were, you know, food was on the mind for everybody. And there were all these jokes, you know, amongst all my Floridian friends about, you know, how much weight we were going to gain from the, from, you know, staying inside and eating. Uh, but, you know, as long as the power stayed on, I kept working, including, you know, writing down my thoughts on the subject. So my writer husband in his cleverness, he said, Hey, you should do something about do hurricanes make you fat? (laughs) I thought it was pretty funny. So that's what we're going to call today's episode. Do hurricanes make you fat? And my little spin on it is, you know, writing in chaotic times. So it has to have a little writer spin on it, not just, I'm not a nutritionist. <laughs> so, you know, what I realized at that time, especially, you know, watching people, you know, do their grocery shopping is, you know, a hurricane is really no place for a health nut so to speak. So when I looked at people's shopping carts and I looked at which shelves in the grocery store and sections were empty, it was like never the vegan or healthy or whatever. No, no, no. It was like chips and cookies and pop tarts and booze, of course. There were jokes about like how it was going to, you know, this hurricane was going to cause alcohol poisoning in half of Florida, (laughs) you know, and of course water. So, you know, water was the healthiest thing I think anybody was stocking up on. So that seems to be the hurricane diet is carbs, salt, sugar, you know, uh, junk food, water, booze. And I wondered, you know, are these people's normal eating habits and they're just kind of, you know, stocking up to make sure that they have enough food to feed their normal eating habits? Or is it like in a natural disaster, it's an excuse to, you know, lose all your habits and go carb crazy? I mean, personally, me, I'm more likely to take a nap in a stressful situation than I am to, you know, eat any Pop-Tarts. I don't know why. You you guys will explain to me why Pop-Tarts are so huge. I guess they're a good thing to eat is even if you can't put them in the toaster in the hurricane. (laughs) But, you know, I understand. I I understand that I'm the exception and that I'm napping and everybody else is, you know, eating chips. Especially, you know, like I said, I was seeing all the social media jokes about the gaining weight and the alcohol poisoning and all this. So fortunately, again, uh, uh, Hurricane Dorian passed on by, but it left the question, do hurricanes make you fat? Or do they simply act as an excuse to do so? And the question that's related to writing is, How can you stick to your habits and keep working toward your goals during chaotic times, especially if one of those goals is writing a book? On a good day, you know, writing a book is already a formidable goal. For someone who has never done it before, even more so, it's easy to fall off track and route to a goal that you're really not sure about. If you really don't have a very strong why, very, very easy to fall off track, whether it's diet or exercise program, uh, sport. Uh, that you're trying to master, anything you're trying to master in life, writing a book, if you don't have a solid why, the excuses or any little excuse can knock you off track. The less solid your attachment to your why, the easier it is to quit. The easier it is to quit. That's when the excuses come in. And you know, some life stuff, obviously we all deal with life things that are completely justified that you really, you should only be focusing on that life event and not worried about, you know, diet, exercise, writing a book, you know, all those kind of things that you're trying to master. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that people kind of put in the category, if I'm being honest, if I'm being candid, quite frankly, it's a collection of thinly disguised reasons to give up and quit on yourself. And it comes down to the strength of your commitment. Are you attached to your goal by a thread or by a cable? Is the goal that you've set for yourself, it, is it a must do or is it optional? Do you use accidents and surprises as an excuse to fall off track? Or do you use them as fuel to double down on your commitment to adopt, to adopt a no matter what attitude and fight for what you want? 
if you think about it, you know, writing itself is an act of overcoming obstacles. So we have our internal demons as authors, you know, ego issues, confidence, procrastination, self-doubt, the especially with my my fellow women out there, imposter syndrome, and other mindset issues that tend to get in our way. And then, you know, that's not even to mention the actual writing challenges, <laughs> the actual writing and creative challenges of writing a book. So on top of that, is there ever really a good time to write a book? Because, you know, if we have too much time, we're prone to procrastination because we think we have all the time in the world. But if we don't have enough time, then, you know, then it's stress time, then it's panic time. But if you're in the midst of chaotic life circumstances that make the idea of writing seem almost absurd, that might actually be the best opportunity to see what you're made of as an author. What better time to put, put your book writing commitment to the test? Because if you think about it, if you can buckle down and write in the middle of chaos, you can write any time after that. So it's kind of like putting yourself to the test and saying, if I can do this, I can do anything. I think this is why I hear of business people that do like Navy SEAL fitness boot camps. There's one in San Diego, I believe. And you see, you know, CEOs and managers and business, you know, white collar business people from all around the country, they come to kind of see what they're made of. And just so that they can have that, like, if I could survive, survive this week of, you know, getting my butt kicked by Navy SEALs, then there's really nothing at the office that is going to, you know, send me, you know, falling off a cliff. And it's just, you know, we need to test our metal once in a while as human beings and especially, you know, as writers as well. I mean, there's a story about, uh, you know, while fighting in the trenches of World War I and witnessing this just horrific carnage all around him, author J.R.R. Tolkien, you know, of Lord of the Rings, he developed a severe case of trench fever and he was hospitalized for quite a period of time. From his hospital bed, that's when he started creating the characters in the worlds for what would become Lord of the Rings. He turned life challenges into opportunity. So my question for you, how can you use the chaos and challenges you encounter in life, not as an excuse to quit on your goals and quit on yourself, but as a reason to go after them with all you've got? I hope you will journal on that, and I hope you will drop by my Ink Authors group on Facebook to share your thoughts. We also have their uh, motivation, accountability, book writing, and publishing resources, and so much more. Ink Authors, where the authors go. Thank you for joining me here on Your Daily Writing Habit, where I'm helping you write and finish writing an awesome book. And if you know someone else who wants to write a book, I would love it if you would share this with them. Thank you, and until tomorrow, happy writing.